So it's pumpkin everything season guys and I've come up with these really super quick and easy pumpkin coasters to make. They're perfect for fall, Thanksgiving and Halloween. I've got a couple here in Halloween themed fabrics. Let me show you how to make them. To make my pumpkin coaster you'll need the template and you can find this over on my website and I'll put a link in the description below. Now this is a great stash buster, I've raided my scraps and I've used the same fabric for the front and the back. You might like to use a different fabric on the back. But for both pieces, I've cut them at 7.5 inches by 6 inches. You'll need a piece of batting at the same size, and you might want to use regular batting or insole bright batting. Maybe if you know you're using your coasters on a really special table, you just might want that extra protection. And then for the stalk, I've got a piece here that's 5 inches by 2.5 inches. So the next thing we're going to do is cut out our template. So we need the oval and the stalk here, and I'm just going to use my paper scissors. Okay, so now I've got my two pieces. Uh, let's just do the stalk first, because that's the quickest. I'm just going to fold it in half, right sides together. And I'll pop my stalk in the middle, pin it and cut around it. Actually, I lied. There were the cute little flowers I wanted to make sure that I get in it. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to be lining that up on top. So I'm getting those little flowers in my stalk. So I'll just pop it like that. Taking my fabric scissors now and just cutting around it. And then I'll just take the paper template off and pin the two sides together so we don't lose them. Set that aside now and now I'll take my oval template and my two pieces of fabric. I'm going to face them right sides together and then place my template on top, making sure it's fitting inside the fabric. And then with the instructions, I did suggest using a larger piece. It's just because I'm using up my scrap here that my piece is just fitting in. And then I'm just going to cut around my template. And just before I take the template off, I'm just going to mark where the two dots are. So I'm just going to lift up the template and mark on the fabric that sewing on each side. Well, we're going to stop sewing. We're going to start sewing there, go all the way around and stop there. And then I'll just remove the pins. And then I just need to cut out the same shape with my batting. Removing the template, removing the fins and the template that is. So now what I'm going to do is take my fabric pumpkins. Now if you had a piece of fabric that you definitely wanted to be at the top of your coaster, for example you might be using a really nice pattern fabric for the top and a plain fabric for the bottom, what we want to do is we want to place the batting on top of your good fabric because when we turn it right sides out we want the batting to be sitting at the front of the fabric so we can hide the stalk behind it. That will make more sense when we get to that part. So just make sure if you've got a piece of fabric that you'd like on the top to be on the top Place your batting on there, and then let's just turn it over and pin it. I just find it easier to sew with the fabric showing and not the batting, because the batting is so puffy, it's sort of hard to follow your lines. Now I have lost my markings for when I'm going to be leaving it open, so I'm just going to flip it over and just... See where I did the marking and just copy it over onto this side as well. And it doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry too much about that. Now let's sew them together. So I'm stitching at stitch length 2.5. I'm using my Gudeman thread, which is what I like to use for general sewing. And I've got my quarter inch foot on so that I can get a nice quarter inch seam allowance. You don't need to use the foot if you don't want to. 
I'm just in the habit of doing so. And I've got a little marking here. Remember we did one, two. Well, I'm starting at the second one. And I'm going to do a back stitch, go all the way around, and then come up to my second marking and do another back stitch. And that's just so that it doesn't come undone when we turn it right sides out. Just move that pin out of the way. So I'm going to start right on top of that first mark. So I'm going to go forward a couple of stitches, back a couple of stitches, and then go all the way around to the second marking. And I'm just going to just carefully follow the curve of my pumpkin and just take it nice and slowly. And if it does get away with you, you can just stop. Make sure your needle's down, lift up your foot and just turn it just to get around the curve a little bit easier. I can just see I'm coming up to my second marking, so I'm just going to sew right up to it. Then do a back stitch and then a few stitches forward. Lift up my foot and I will just trim the thread so it's nice and tidy as I go. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my stalk and all we need to do is sew around the three sides and we're going to leave an opening. So um, I'm not going to leave a pin in there because it's just so little it's going to get in the way. I'm going to start at the very edge. And then I'm going to stitch down to the corner, guessing we're about my quarter inch seam allowances. Doing my best guess. So coming down and I'm guessing that's about quarter of an inch away from the edge. Making sure my needle's down, lifting up my foot, turning and then carrying on to the next edge and stopping about a quarter of an inch away again. Lifting up my foot with the needle down and then turning and then carrying on to the edge here. And I've stitched right off the edge and I'll just trim those threads again. Okay, now let's trim our two shapes. So starting off with my stalk, I'm just going to cut those corners off so it's not so bulky when we turn it right sides out. So I'm just going to cut across and across, just being careful not to cut those stitches. And then with my pumpkin, what happens when we turn it right sides out is it can be really bulky on these curves here. Not so much on this one, but definitely on these inner curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to cut off all the excess. So I'm just going to get as close as I'm comfortable to the stitches and trim off all that excess. Don't get too close, but we, we do want to cut off a bit of that excess there. And I'll do it on the other side. Or if you're not comfortable doing this, you could have just cut notches. And when I say notches, I mean you could have done notches like this all the way around the curve. It's just a lot quicker just to cut off all, all that excess. And because we're probably not going to be washing these an awful lot, they're going to be more ornamental. I think it's fine just to, to trim off all that excess in one go. So now what I'm going to do is open up my pumpkin in between the two good fabrics. And then I'm going to pop my fingers in, grab the bottom of the pumpkin and pull it through. And I'm going to push out all those edges and we want that to be sitting really nicely. Um, if you've got a point turner, you could use that just to make sure they're all rolled out. And we'll take another look at this when we're pressing it. But that's looking pretty good to me. Depending on how much attention you pay at this step really will depend on the shape of your pumpkin. If you can't be, I shouldn't say can't be bothered because it doesn't sound very nice, but if you're not inclined to really work on making sure all these edges are nicely rolled out, you could see that like your pumpkin could end up qu quite a funny shape. Um, and it's quite surprising how easily that can happen. So just spend a little bit of time rolling out all those edges so we've got a really nice shape. And then I'm going to take my stalk. This is a little bit fiddly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and I'm just going to pinch it down. And then I'm going to get my point turner again and 
push it from the top down so that I can grab at it to turn it right sides out. And then I'm gonna use my point turner just to push it all out nicely. If you don't have a point turner, you could use something blunt like a chopstick. You could use a pencil, but you just need to be careful that with the sharp edge, you don't accidentally punch a hole in your fabric. So use the end with the eraser on. Okay, so that's looking good to me. Let's give both these pieces a press. So I've got my pumpkin here and the with the right side facing me and the right side is going to be the side that has the batting towards you as well. So there's one side that definitely is the fabric and the batting and the other side is just the fabric. So we want the batting on the top and now I'm just going to make sure I'm really happy with all those rolled out edges before I give it a press because like I said this really is going to determine the integrity of our pumpkin shape. So just roll them all out. They're all looking pretty good to me. And now I'm just going to give that a press. And I'm just going to let it cool down a bit before I do the next step. And then when it comes to this opening, I'm just going to tuck it in with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and getting it sitting really nicely and then I'll press that as well. It can be a bit fiddly, so if you'd like, you can do one side at a time. And once you're happy, just give it a press. Okay, and then I'm just going to check that I'm happy with how it's sitting on the back. So once you're happy that it's all sitting nicely, we'll set that aside and then we will just take the stalk and also make sure all the edges are rolled out so it's all sitting really nice and give that a little press. And now we're going to sew them together. We'll I'll show you the next step over at the sewing machine. So now we're just going to place our stalk in and pin it in place and then we're going to draw the lines that create our quilted detail here. So I just wanted to show you on this finished pumpkin first. So with my pumpkin facing me with the right side, so if I open it up I've got the batting and the fabric on this side towards me and then I've just got the fabric sitting towards the back. What I'm going to do is find that opening, take my stalk and make sure if it does have a right side or a wrong side that the right side is facing you or the side that you prefer. Remember I liked my three flowers. And then I'm just gonna pop it in the center there and just get it sitting where I think it looks right. Now, how you have the stalk is up to you. I thought it's kind of cute if they're a bit crooked or what have you. Put it somewhere in the center there, sitting how you want it to sit and then pop a pin in just to keep it in place. Making sure all those edges are also tucked in nicely. And what we will do in a moment is sew around the whole edge to keep that in place. But what we're going to do now is just draw our lines for our quilted detail. And what we need to do is start at the center of the stalk. So that's why we put the stalk in before we do this step. And just mark the center. And then we're just going to come around and echo the shape of the pumpkin on both sides. And then coming back down to the center bottom. And then again, and then again on one side. So I'll start in the center at the top. And echoing the shape of the pumpkin, I'm just going to come around and I'm just using a chalk pencil. You might have a washable marker or you might just be able to do this by eye and don't need to do this step. Then I'm going to come around the other side and then come down to the bottom center. Again on either side, starting at the center, coming around, following the shape of the pumpkin and down to the bottom. And then I think it looks cute to just do it on one side. Now, I'm not very good at art, so I find it helps to just do that beforehand. But you might just want to do that without drawing the lines, and that's entirely up to you. Now let's just sew those lines on. So I've just got my standard foot on now, and I'm going to be stitching at about a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, just right around the edge of our pumpkin. It's just to close our opening and 
for decorative purposes. I'm still stitching at stitch length 2.5 and I'm just going to start right before my stalk there. So putting my foot down, removing that pin. Oh, just making sure those edges are tucked in nicely and we will be catching them. And I'm not going to worry about a back stitch because we'll be coming back over this. So I am just going to quickly cut these threads otherwise you accidentally run them over and it can become a bit of a mess underneath. So I've just cut them so they're not going to get in our way. Coming up past where we started. And now I'm just going to come into the center where I did my dot and now I'm going to start doing those first lines creating our detail. And then I'll come down to the bottom and just lift my foot up with my needle down and turn. Remember that's what we do if we can't quite make a turn is make sure the needle's down, lift the foot up and just help it around by turning it. And then I'm coming back up to the center of the stalk, stopping, needle down, lifting my foot up and turning so I can make it round that line there. Coming back down to the bottom center, stopping, turning, carrying on. And now just up back at the top center, lifting my foot up, needles down and turning it all the way around to just do that last line. And remember they were just meant to be guides, you don't have to follow exactly. And now I'm coming back down to that center and when I get to the last little bit now what I like to do is lift my foot up and turn it and just follow that the first original line we did when we went around the whole edge so I'll just go along that a little bit do a back stitch and now just trim my threads okay there we go our cute little pumpkin coaster now I do just like to give it one last press so it's sitting really nice and flat. Now if you're not comfortable doing those lines, just drawing them roughly and doing what have you, I'm happy to put them on the pattern. Just leave a comment and let me know if you'd like me to add them. So it's looking a little bit wrinkly so I'll give it one last press. And there we go, there's our really cute little pumpkin coaster all ready for fall and Halloween. Super quick and easy is definitely how I would describe my pumpkin coasters. If you've liked this video please make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them please like, subscribe and leave a comment.